This will be the continuation of my one build for all game mode series. I initially did one of the elite specs and found out what the best build I could find while minimizing the amount of gearing and swapping of templates you'll need to do so that you can focus on what's fun about the game. Last time I covered the specialization I thought was best, but this time I will be covering the other elite specialization available because some might prefer that playstyle and the true optimal build is the one that's the most fun. With End of Dragons coming out soon, you won't be able to immediately play the new specializations, at least until you learn them, so the purpose here is to have one build that you can survive on, have fun, and still succeed in most situations. You will only need to have a few templates set up and then whenever you swap game modes it will automatically change to them. Because we ended with the Mesmer Mirage build, let's start the second set with the Chronomancer. If you aren't yet able to use Elite Specializations, then check out my leveling builds video which is linked below. First let's go over the Chronomancer core mechanics that will apply to all game modes. There are two types of illusions, phantasms and clones. Some skills create phantasms and some create clones. Clones are used to shatter and phantasms will perform an attack and then become a clone which can be used to shatter. Clones do much less damage than phantasms, but shatters can be very powerful and clones can often be generated faster than phantasms can. The main damaging shatter is the F1 split second, which will send all of your clones in and explode twice. The rewinder isn't too strong on a power build, but time sync will daze and give slow to the target, which is really nice for interrupting. The final shatter is Continuum Split, and this is a difficult ability to get used to. Essentially, you will create a rift to an amount of time depending on how many clones were shattered. While in the rift, nothing different will happen, but after the rift ends, you will be sent back to your original location, regain all of your health that you lost, regain all of your cooldowns you used, but keep all the conditions and boons that you have gained. Essentially, you want to use big cooldowns or massive combos while in continuum split because you get more value out of it that way. However, you can't always get the ideal combo off because you need to use clone generating skills to be able to shatter, which means you can't use those while in continuum split. You can also choose to double up on a specific skill that a situation needs, so there's a lot of decision making to using this skill effectively. Otherwise, Chronomancers get Alacrity whenever they shatter, which will reduce their cooldowns by 25% while active. So every second that you have Alacrity, a quarter of a second of all of your cooldowns will come off. For a specific skill, this isn't much, but because the class and this build can get more clone generation and therefore more Alacrity as a result, it has a self-synergistic feedback loop. The equipment I take is Full Berserker Power Precision Ferocity. A couple pieces of Marauder could be fine here and there, but mostly Berserker is what you want. I take the Defender Rune, which will give a good amount of health and toughness, but also it will heal for 5% of my maximum health every time I block with a 1 second cooldown. That means about 800-ish healing with 17,000 health. With this build, there will be plenty of blocks which can provide most of the sustain that you'd otherwise lack with a full Berserker set. I have many weapons that I use between all the game modes since Mesmers are so utility based, but you may only use the ones outlined in this build and it'll work out. There are two swords that I put Force Sigil and Severance Sigil on. Force is just mainly going to give you damage and then Severance will give you a lot more damage when you interrupt an enemy. The sword sword set is my damage set, so I just put full damage sigils on it and there's a lot of interrupts on this build and CCs which can interrupt so you can easily trigger the severance sigil. Then I take a scepter and a shield with cleansing and energy on them because I'll be using this as my defensive set with plenty of blocks on it. Also this has quite a bit of clone generation on it for more sustain and farming alacrity. 
Also, I would suggest grabbing a Focus and a Greatsword for the Worldly World and PvP builds and just general utility. I also use the Curry Butternut Squash Soup because this build needs a little bit more precision. The PvE version of the build uses Inspiration and Illusions to get as much synergy as possible out of Phantasm generation. Phantasms will have Quickness whenever they spawn and Aegis, and when they become a clone, they will transfer their boons to you. And they'll also give you might because of Phantasmal Force, which will also make your Phantasms deal more damage the more might you have. So in an ideal situation, you would have tons of might, quickness, and Aegis to do plenty of damage and to survive with the blocks that will also heal you from Defender Runes. Also, you'll have Chrono Phantasma, which will make all Phantasms resummon themselves once before becoming a clone, meaning these boons will be doubled for you. You'll also have your Phantasms take conditions from you whenever they're summoned, which will give you a lot of sustain. And you'll also have Illusionary Inspiration, which every time you summon an Illusion, you will be healed and nearby allies will also be healed. Because Chrono Phantasma will summon another Phantasm and then your Phantasm will become a clone, you will essentially summon three illusions every phantasm, which ends up healing you a lot over time. Also remember that all these illusions are going to be taking hits for you and mobs will attack them instead of you often. You won't struggle to do any solo content in this game and can even solo some group content like dungeons and low level fractals. If you really care for more damage, and take the dueling and domination trait lines, just take all of the damaging traits and this would be good in situations where you have to play the role of a DPS where your team will give you the buffs and all the healing that you need to survive. The big damage on this build comes from the Sword 5 Phantasmal Swordsman and the Phantasmal Disenchanter as well as the second split which you want to be using with three clones and you'll also do quite a bit of damage from the sword auto chain because the third hit will deal quite a bit of damage and the sword two is very bursty as well but because the other skills are more efficient and to be honest more reliable to land you won't want to just sit there and wait for your sword attacks to come off cooldown if you can get more alacrity you should go into the scepter auto chain which will give you a clone on the third strike and then you can shatter at three which will give you another clone because of illusionary reversion and that can give you a lot of alacrity which can allow you to get the rest of your skills off and allow the build flow of course if you don't have many shatters to use or have plenty of clones to shatter you won't need to swap out also remember that your heal skill can recharge all of your phantasms and that this can also be done within your continuum split so the priority is to use your heal skill right after you've used all your phantasms and then reuse all of your phantasms again to get their cooldowns rolling as soon as possible. Always prioritize using the F1 as soon as you have three clones but otherwise just shatter anything else that you'll need. And of course use Sword 2 and Scepter 3 for damage and fill the gaps with defensive skills like Well of Precognition or any of your blocks from Sword 4, Scepter 2, or your Shield 4. If you successfully block an attack with any of these skills, they actually deal quite a bit of damage and they'll gain an added effect, so be good at timing them. The basic rotation will look like this. Open with Shield 4, then auto attack for two full cycles of the Scepter 1 for three clones, and then you want to use Shield 5 for quickness and CC, then you'll use your basically your continuum rift burst and then you'll use your heal skill use all of your phantasms if you can and then once you leave you want to keep shattering and using all your phantasms and your heal skill to get them all back keep shattering once you've used all of your phantasms you want to use your sword too and then keep shattering you're going to probably have more clones than you can really deal with you can put in your well of precognition there just to get a little bit of defense in between 
and then once you use your phantasmal swordsman again you'll probably want to swap out so you can get more shatters just to get your cooldowns back now i have my signet of the ether coming up so i want to use that with all of my phantasm so i swap back i'm not going to wait for my defender because that's just a long cooldown and i'm going to use all of my phantasms again shatter use sword two meanwhile i'm just auto attacking with my sword and that's pretty much it here's a giganticus lupicus solo as the chronomancer build and this boss is actually not very difficult on this build as long as you know the mechanics because essentially what i have to do is just not get hit by any of these singular attacks and because I have so many ways to block, you know, I have evade and block on both of my weapon sets quite a bit in, in terms of, you know, the sword. I have the evade on sword two, I have the block on sword four, and then I have the scepter two block. I have the shield four, which is a double block if I proc it. So there's a lot of survivability. And yeah, if I do get hit by one of the attacks here, it could be devastating. But I have so many ways to deal with it that, yeah, it's just really easy. Um, but I do have to perform the build properly. So here I am trying to kill these locust swarms because they can kind of get annoying. And I see that the boss is at 77%. I know that it phases at 75. So I want to make sure that I don't have any clones out because the boss can spawn its mechanic on one of my clones and I need that mechanic to be on me so that I can get it away from the boss so that he can't eat the grub and yeah here I'm shattering all my clones I get the mechanic I walk away and now I need to kill this grub because that'll buff the boss if the boss eats it so I'm gonna get some damage here on this grub and now we're in phase two so in phase two I want to Make sure that I don't get hit by their projectile uh, throws here. So I am going to be using a lot of evades here. And I will liberally swap into the scepter here if I have to. And just getting out. Yeah, so here I'm going to need to be careful. I'm going to probably dodge because I don't have my feedback up yet. And I have my continuum rift. Now I'm going to wait for some of my cooldowns here so that I can get the full continuum rift combo. And I put the feedback down so that I can do this safely. I use my heal skill to get all my phantasms back. I didn't get the best value because I think my continuum rift died or I lost some clones here. But yeah, it's going to be okay. Um, so the boss is going pretty close to 50% HP here. I'm going to have to dodge. I'm playing very safely there because I see that I'm kind of low on dodges. So... I swapped into the scepter to get a little bit more defensive capabilities. I can shatter here to get more alacrity, to get my cooldowns back. And they're gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna swap in the sword because I'm out of blocks there. Now, I'm gonna use all of my phantasms if I can. Use my heal to get them all back. And as you can see, like the, the boss is just hitting my clones very often because I have so many of them and it's just giving me a lot of potential to just free cast. Now the boss is phasing here, so they're gonna go into phase three, and that means they're gonna get a lot more dangerous abilities and life stealing capability as well. So I'm gonna have to dodge this or they're gonna heal off of it. And yeah, I wanna be careful of this attack as well. I wanna shatter my clones usually when the boss does that because that will, the boss will essentially life steal off of my clones when they do that. So yeah, and here you can see they're life stealing off my clone. Yeah, so usually you want to shatter your clones when they do that, but if the clones are up, they're also kind of protecting me. So it's like, a do I want to play more aggressively or do I want to play more defensively? So if you want to play more aggressively, then you want to be shattering. If you want to play more defensively, then you'll be saving your clones. So here, yeah, probably I'm going to shatter, but this is one of the scary abilities here so i'm dodging and spamming as many blocks as i can in that because it's just pulsing area damage and it also kind of traps you in there unless i had well of precognition which would give me stability for like a second then i could get out but otherwise i'm kind of trapped in there i don't have any ports to get out so i have to block inside there so it is very dangerous but yeah i'm just spamming my phantasms 
and keeping my shatters in case I want to you know protect myself I'm playing pretty safely here but at this point there's the feedback that I can use to get more damage on the boss and I'm just auto attacking here I'm gonna use my shield four or my sword four to get some damage on the boss those block abilities actually do pretty good damage but I'm gonna shatter here now I have my sword five which I can use very safely here and I'm going to use my heal skill probably or maybe I'll wait till the yeah I'll wait till the next no I just use it now okay yeah you can delay your your heal skill to get more value off of your phantasms but if you delay your heal skill too much then you're not getting value on the heal skill so it's you, you know you have to use it eventually and here we're going to get the feedback going to get some big damage on the boss and here we're going to do a uh, scepter 2 to get some extra damage and my phantasms and continuum rift are coming up soon but yeah i'm not going to use the continuum rift this time because i don't think i was ready for it i'm going to shatter and i can i can always use my well of precognition to just safely auto attack the boss which does decent amount of damage but i am saving it just in case i get stuck in the mechanic there uh, the one where you get stuck in the bubble so my continue yeah i went into scepter here so i'm probably waiting to do my continue rift combo in a couple seconds i get stuck in the bubble i use well of precognition with the stability to get out and now i'm going to do the continue rift combo with feedback my heal skill into all my phantasms and then use all my shatters for alacrity and just repeat the process and using the feedback in the continue rift combo there as well allows me to use feedback twice so now the boss is at 5%. We pretty much got this. And I'm just going to play safely and Scepter Auto attack the boss until they're dead. So yeah, that's... And yeah, I didn't have to really use Gravity Well here, so I'm just going to waste it for damage. But yeah, that's pretty much how you want to think about uh, handling solo situations is rotating through your cooldowns like that. In World vs. World, you will want to focus less on Phantasms because it's much harder to land them and you'll want to focus much more on boon removal and shatters because world versus world is all about stability and being able to rip stability and lock down enemies for your team is an invaluable utility. As a dedicated world v world zerging build, you'd want to be wanderer stats or maybe even marauders, but since you may not be able to be in that zerg at all times, it's nice to have some potential damage to get things done by yourself. You'll use the same Berserker gear with Defender runes, but swap your offhand to a Focus with the Cleansing Sigil, so you'll have a Sword Focus with Severance Sigil and Cleansing, and then a Scepter Shield with Energy Cleansing. Take Dominations and Illusions and go for all the Boon Removal traits. In Illusions, go for Shatterstorm and all of the Shatter Synergy skills because it's going to allow you more effects. So for example, your F1 is going to have higher crit chance. You're going to have cripple on your F2. You're going to have a AOE range rather than a single target on your F3, which is going to help you remove a lot more boons. And your continuum shift will have a longer duration baseline, which is going to allow you to do a lot more long winded combos without as much setup. Gravity Well is nice in PvE and all, but where it really shines is in World v World and PvP where you can CC and pull together enemies for big burst combos. Because you'll be using the focus, you can use the Temporal Curtain to organize enemies into your Gravity Well for unparalleled initiations and coordinated bursts. Also, you want to enable the retargeting option here in your settings and instant ground targeting because this will allow you to essentially move the location of your well mid cast which can not only give you longer reach on it but it can allow you to more reliably land it on targets who are moving so your combo will look like this you will phantasmal warden which is 1200 range it's a decent phantasm and you'll do your 900 range Phantasmal Disenchanter, which removes five boons and will bounce with an unblockable attack and hit 
four other targets. So it removes a lot of boons, which will allow you to land your Temporal Curtain. And your Temporal Curtain, you'll lead into your Gravity Well Continuum Split Combo, Null Field, and then you'll swap to your Shield 5, use your Scepter 3, and then by now you'll be out of your Continuum Rift, or even before, because maybe you won't have the most clones for your Continuum Split Combo. And then once you get out, you can just do your Gravity Well Null Field again and Tides of Time, and you can lock down your enemies for a really long time. You also have the ability to recharge your Phantasms with Signal of the Ether, which would only do 50% recharge in World v. World. So just try to save that for when you use your Echo of Memory, because it's going to give you a lot more blocks to recharge it like that. And also, in your Sword, you have the ability to immobilize, which is kind of like a different thing than CC because they have to cleanse the immobilize on your sword 3 and unlike your CCs they can just stun break that so you can kind of like put two different kinds of CCs so you illusionary leap and then you swap places with the clone and then that will immobilize the target which will allow you to land more of your CCs as well. The role of the build in a team situation is like an initiator you want to put out your temporal curtain, pull people in, and CC them with big gravity well combos, and then rip their boons so that your DPS players can land their damage. Now, I can still do quite a bit of damage as well because I'm on Berserker Amulet, but generally you're going to be a support because your damage is going to be very burst oriented and not DPS oriented. So you can't kill anyone necessarily by yourself, in large scale situations in smaller scale situations you could run like the pvp version that i'll show you very soon but yeah for the most part you want to be looking for big pulls baiting out enemy cooldowns and if you use your cooldowns and they use theirs to get out of yours well then that frees up your teammates to use their cooldowns on the enemies so it's it's always a good idea to go in for plays when your team is nearby to capitalize on it In PvP, you'll be going for the same boon ripping shatter combo playstyle, but with more complexity for playmaking and burst damage, you'll take the great sword and use the sword shield. The stats don't really matter because the PvP stats and options are accessible and handled within the PvP gear tab. I take the Marauder Amulet because you don't have a lot of sustain on this build so you need a little bit more health than the Berserker Amulet with the Chronomancer Rune because getting quickness while casting wells allows me to more fluidly perform my combos and since I can double cast my wells with Continuum Rift it adds up to quite a bit of quickness. I take cleansing on both weapon sets and on the greatsword I take exposure because of the fragility trait synergy and I take energy on the sword. I go for the greatsword trait and power block in domination because it can both peel enemies off of me with the weakness and lock down enemies by increasing the cooldowns of abilities I interrupt. And since I have so many CCs as well as the mantra of distraction which is an instant cast interrupt on the target, I can easily interrupt heal skills which are key animations to stop in PvP to reduce time to kill. Mantra of Distraction can also be used freely in Continuum Split because it's instant cast so it doesn't take up any animation time, but just don't daze someone in your gravity well. I also go for the Alacrity Slow package here to get a lot of Alacrity uptime which makes the entire build feel much better. Lower cooldowns on my heal skill means more sustain. Lower cooldowns on my shatters and clone generation means more bursts, which also means more alacrity. Illusionary Reversion also has great synergy with mirror images, which will grant an extra clone every time you shatter with three clones. Because mirror images gives two clones, I can essentially only require one clone and then I can mirror images to get that third clone. So it's much less susceptible to counterplay by enemies killing my clones and much faster burst potential. You can even use mirror images 
while in Continuum Split to double up on the Shatter Bursts. The best skills to use within your Continuum Split on this build are Mirror Images, all of your Shatters, Gravity Well, and Phantasmal Berserker. This is mainly because the Mirror Images and Shatters are instant cast, so they're free damage that you'll get back anyway. And Gravity Well is a really heavy cooldown, and Phantasmal Berserker is a boon rip clone generating skill that also does great damage. So it's going to allow you a lot more follow through as well as more burst. So these are the best value skills to use in your Continuum Rift. And if you're about to have them off cooldown, you should wait to use the Continuum Rift. So the ideal combo would be for an Illusionary Leap which would give you one clone, immobilize into Tides of Time, and you'll go into your Continuum Split, into your Gravity Well, then you can swap to your Great Sword, use Phantasmal Berserker, and Mirror Images, and all of your Shatters. So it'll look something like this. So first Shatter, Phantasmal Berserker, and just blow all of your Burst into that, and then you can just do it again on your Great Sword here. You can do this into your mirror images, daze them with the third set of clones there, and I could have Mantra of Distraction there. I can also do Gravity Well again, which can allow me to land my Greatsword 2 into my F1. And of course, my shield skill is going to be off cooldown as well when I go back into my shield, and that's going to also give me more alacrity, and I can reduce the cooldown. Here's a ranked match as the Power Chronomancer with Power Block. And the role of the build is not so much to be a roamer, but more of a team fighter. However, I am going to go cap home at the start here because our team doesn't really have any support. So essentially I want to allow our team to do whatever at mid, they may win or lose mid, but I don't want to be there without a support because it's a little bit too volatile. I want to wait a little bit and hopefully no one pushes me at home so I can come into the fight late and secure some kills after they use some of their cooldowns there. So I'm coming into mid and I see the target is on, yeah, their Renegade is kiting. So I wanna go for something that's standing on the node that isn't kiting so I can get the kill. I retarget to their core guardian, which is probably the best target here because they can't kite as fast. They don't have the mobility and I do my continuum split combo. I do all of my shatters, they catch up and land all the boom rips. And my team goes down here, so I'm gonna to try to do a secondary burst here. I put down my grab well, I do my mirror images into my split second, and then I get a down there, so that's pretty good. We're gonna be able to go for the next target here, which is their Mirage. They have distortion, and we're gonna just keep on the target because we have our Great Sword 4 coming in. And we're going to land the burst there with the power block. Now I'm just cleaving with my auto attack because I don't have much besides my shatters pretty much. So I need to generate some clones here. I'm trying to get out the damage. I mirror images into my shatter there. And now we're able to get the kill on the core guardian again. So this is pretty good in terms of us getting kills on the map. But we don't have anyone playing side nodes, so I can't really push into far because I can't 1v1 a Condi Mirage. So I'm going to instead go to home, but our warrior is now heading into home, so I don't need to go there because they can cap that by themselves. So I'm going to head back into mid, which our team isn't doing the best at. So I'm going to go for the kill on this Weaver. I land a really good immobilize, which is going to allow me to CC them and do the mirror images split second, get the kill there. And my ally goes down, so I go for a gravity well there to peel them off and then go for a secondary gravity well to finish that kill off. I'm going to go for some, yeah, they get the stomp on my ally there. So I'm going to try to disengage, look for a better situation here because it looks like we're pretty heavily outnumbered here for now. So. I am just trying to pressure and looking for the next target. So their guardian is standing on node, so my hollow is going to attack them and I'll attack what my teammate is on. So we'll get some boon rips there. Now the guardian looks like they're pretty okay on health, but the mesmer is not as high, but they get the down on our ally. I try to go for some interrupts just to counter pressure and I have a three clone shatter there twice, but 
I can't really do anything else with my teammate down there, so I'm going to disengage, use my heal here to prevent my health from going any lower. And I know that the top buff is coming up soon, so I'm going to try to get out of combat and be ready for the next fight that will happen. So their Mesmer is going to contest it with me and their Revenant also jumps on me. I knock them away and I have to stop them from getting the buff there while also defending from the Rev which is very dangerous. So I have my Continuum split and I can go for some Jukes here. I use my Continuum split actually with my heal well so that I get a double heal well which allows me to survive long enough to prevent them from getting the buff in a 1v2 but I'm not a duelist I can't really survive 1v2 so I just have to disengage here and allow them to get the buff. Now I know that the rev is going to jump on me so I save my evade there and my teammates are going to get the uh, they're going to decap the node there because they have the buff right but I've been outnumbered for so long that I'm running out of cooldowns and I'm going to die but my team is here finally and we get the kill so we're going to be able to actually not it's not too bad that we we lost the buff because they don't have any nodes now so this is pretty good so now i see that their core guardian is going to take a 1v1 with our dead eye dead eyes are usually pretty good against um that matchup because they just have so much output so i'm going to leave that but i'm going to head into mid and see if we can get some kills here see they're targeting yeah the weaver here so we're going to jump on that get the good shield uh, stun there and immediately use the shatters into that and that's gonna allow us to get that kill and now we're gonna chase I see that our warrior died off the node and I'm looking to maybe go for a decap but yeah their team arrives here I knock their I believe that was the renegade down the hole and I'm gonna actually follow them down but this is still dangerous because I'm sort of low on health I'm blocking and trying to yeah kite around this pillar i do another double heal well here but it wasn't really necessary because the renegade actually disengaged so that ended up not being necessary but just in case i did it anyways but yeah now we don't have continuum split so i see their rev is really low we're going to get on that and i port and do my mirror images on top of them so that my shatters will instantly pop on top of them and get the kill instantly and now that we have the down, I can gravity well and secure the kill with my Greatsword 2 and my split second. And I'll be doing quite a bit of CCs here as well. Yeah, so I have a lot of alacrity here, so I'm going to probably use my heal well to survive. And yeah, the alacrity uptime is just so high here that I'm able to keep pumping out the damage. I get a nice little CC there on the Ellie to get away from me, but I see that the, yeah, the Mesmer here is kind of low so I want to focus them and finish the kill off I get stunned and this is pretty dangerous so I try to disengage but the weavers on mid as well so I just kill the clones and I see that the bottom buff is up so I have to stop that so I use my heal well and I'm going to be able to stop them with my great sword here but yeah they're they're gonna you know re-engage on me so i have to back off my team is actually here so this is pretty good but yeah the weaver comes in and i have to yeah that's really unfortunate so i blinked and it went nowhere so i'm going to be forced to use my entire burst combo on top of me just to try to get people off of me and i just got power blocked on my gravity well so that's going to be unfortunate so now we're going to try to stall the buff as long as we can while waiting for respawn probably uh, or some reinforcements here. So there's two people capping the buff which I can stop them but yeah there's three of them down here and our team is actually getting the rest of the map for the most part. So we can potentially be okay here if we just all don't die here. Now we, we have the cap on mid and home, so we just need to go to the bottom and deal with that. So when I spawn, we've actually lost far, so our warrior died there, but our team kind of needs help at the bottom buff, but they're also kind of all dying. So I decide here to take the 1v1 with their weaver, and this is actually a water weaver, which is really tanky, so I 
potentially should not be here because if they're really tanky they'll just win by surviving all my damage and I don't have that much sustain so I'll lose eventually. So this is I think a bad play to take this 1v1 because I could go to the bottom buff, let them have mid node but I can do way more at the team fight there and potentially swing that in our favor or because I swing it in my favor so much, the team fights, I can promote other rotations for my teammates to be able to go to this fight that I uh, mistakenly gone, have gone to. So I actually do a really good burst here, but um, yeah, I'm running out of health and I have no cleanses and I go down. So now we're in a really bad situation. If you die in a 1v1, you've essentially really done bad. So I should have never taken the 1v1. I should have just stayed with my team at bottom. And as you can see, look, they're they're actually doing pretty okay at bottom. So if I had gone there and the Weaver had gone there as well, I would probably have provided a lot more to that team fight. So taking that 1v1, big mistake. It's not what you wanna do. So yeah, this is like, super like role oriented rotations here that you know it's just you want to go to the right place and not take matchups that are wrong but that mistake is going to cost us quite a lot because now we don't have mid we don't have far and the buff is coming up and i'm forced to take the 1v1 now with this rev which is a completely different situation now because if they get the buff then they have a four cap so it's not like I'm giving up a one cap there. If I lose mid, I'm giving up you know two an extra two caps if I give up the buff here. So I'm forced to get this. My teammates come help me to get the buff. But even if we go and fight bottom, we're gonna lose at top. So I'm forced to go into far and get the D cap. But yeah, we're kind of dying at bottom and we're gonna be yeah forced to. I think we're gonna be forced to lose the buff anyways. So I think, yeah, this is pretty much game over. There's no way to come back from this. But that's, as I said, how you play the build. So if you like this kind of content, then like the video, subscribe for more. And if you want to support me, then you can check the links in the description and leave a comment that promotes some sort of discussion. And if you really don't like this Chronomancer build, go check out the Mirage one instead. And I will see you all next time.